Welcome to Djobnik, your command post for clarity and perspective. Good afternoon. I'm Avi Hyman, Israeli government spokesman. Today is 178, is day 178 of the October 7th war. 178 days on. Our war aims remain the same. Destroy Hamas. Bring home the hostages. Ensure that Gaza never becomes a threat to us again. First, I'll start with an update on our casualties from this war. We've reached a painful milestone. IDF fatalities since the start of, October 7th, of the October 7th massacre have unfortunately risen to 600. That's up three since our last briefing on Thursday. The people of Israel grieve with the families of Sergeant Major Alon Kudishov, who was 21 from Modi'in and fell in battle in southern Gaza. Family and friends have spoken about a quiet leader who loved people. We worried about him because the Alon we knew was someone who always ran ahead. With Alon, they said it was little talk and a lot of action. Sergeant First Class Sivan Weil was aged 20 from Ra'anana. He also fell in southern Gaza. He leaves, he leaves behind his parents, two brothers and one sister. Sivan and his family immigrated from France and he was active in the French Jewish scouting movement. Staff Sergeant Nadav Cohen was aged 20 and was from Haifa. He fell in the south of Gaza. His high school teacher characterized Nadav as a boy with a captivating smile and endless giving, always the first to volunteer, to lead, to serve as a personal example. Our hearts go out to all the families of those soldiers killed in action, as well as those who were murdered, taken hostage and wounded. Next, I want to deal with reports of food insecurity in Gaza ahead of the integrated food security phase classification known as the IPC. They made their doomsday predictions. Well, COGAT, which coordinates facilitate, and facilitates humanitarian aid entering Gaza, says the report quotes Hamas figures uncritically, uncritically. So the report presents an inaccurate image with multiple factu factual, methodological flaws and information gaps. It relies on pro problematic sources, including the Hamas-run Gaza Ministry of Health. So a report outdated even before its publication is parroted internationally and the UN take their word for it. To repeat, COGAT confirms it's a bad assessment based on, out of, on an out-of-date picture. Just yesterday, 205 aid trucks carrying humanitarian aid were inspected by Israel and transferred to Gaza. There is, stable, there is a stable food supply in southern Gaza. 242 packages of food carrying hundreds of thousands of meals were airdropped over northern Gaza since the start of March. An average of 140 daily food trucks have entered Gaza. Before the, before the war, only 70 food trucks entered Gaza daily. So double the amount of food is going in than before the war. Markets are bustling. Food stocks are piled up in the aid agency warehouses. Hamas's objective is to create an image of a humanitarian crisis. Where there is hunger in Gaza, it is hunger orchestrated by Hamas. These are the images they create. These are the images they want you to see. I can guarantee three things. Number one, no one in Hamas is hungry. Number two, Hamas and other criminal and terrorist gangs steal the aid. Number three, Hamas wants to maximize the suffering of ordinary Gazans. Why? To stop the war, to protect their own skins. Today and every day, 
We are filling Gaza with aid by land, air and sea. Moving on to the situation at the Shifa hospital. I believe that the terrorist takeover of Shifa and the subsequent special forces operation to clear the hospital of terrorists will be studied by future generations of military strategists at West Point and Sandhurst as the gold standard for urban warfare. The Prime Minister confirmed, and I quote, Our forces operated there in, exe in an exemplary fashion. Shifa has become a main terrorism command center for Hamas. The surprise action by our forces was precise and surgical. On Rafa, the Prime Minister confirmed, I have approved the IDF operation plan for Rafa. The IDF is prepared for the evacuation of the civilian population and for the provision of humanitarian assistance. We will enter Rafa and we will eliminate the Hamas battalions there for one simple reason. There is no victory without entering Rafa and there is no victory without eliminating the Hamas battalions there. This is a fundamental part of the goals of the war, which always included returning all of our hostages. The Prime Minister met with the hostage families yesterday and said, I'd like to tell you that the distress and the pain of the hostage families rends my heart. They break all of our hearts. Now, an update from the north of Israel. A short while ago, IDF fighter jets simultaneously struck approximately 10 Hezbollah terror targets, including a weapons storage facility, launch posts, and terrorist infrastructure in the area of Rahaya al fuka in southern Lebanon. I will remind you that 61,000 Israelis are currently displaced from their homes in the north. 61,000 Israelis. Our patience is not inexhaustible. Okay, that brings us to an end of today's briefing. I will now take your questions. Please state your name and your outlet in the chat box. Thank you. First question from <coughs> David Clement at the News Forum. The Gaza Health Ministry is saying the death toll from the war is now over 33,000. Does the Prime Minister's office have comment on the accuracy of that figure and an, and an estimate for how many Hamas fighters are in that total? Well, what I can confirm to you without a doubt is what happened on October 7th when Hamas plowed through our borders, killing children in front of their parents, parents in front of their children, raping young girls in front of their parents, burning entire families alive. Hamas is a brutal, brutal terror organization that must be destroyed. And that's what we're going to do. Now, that being said, Hamas is that same organization that puts out numbers. Hamas is that same organization which has a um, reason to put out the numbers. It is their very modus operandi to say that the more civilians um, pe that people think have lost their lives, the more likely it is for Hamas to stay in power. That's what they want, to stay in power. Now, I can tell you, as we've said before, that we have killed well in excess of uh, 12,000 uh, Hamas and Islamic uh, Jihad terrorists. Um, a liberal estimate of uh, those who were taken off the battlefield, meaning those who've been killed, um, detained, and uh, killed, detained, and injured, is well over 25,000. Um, our fight is with Hamas, not the people of Gaza. When the dust settles on this war, the world will see the true numbers that will come out and show that we have set, we, the IDF, has set the gold standard for one of the hardest, if not the hardest, uh, cases of urban warfare uh, in which a terrorist organization has embedded itself for 16 years in, within, and under a uh, civilian population. Thank you. Um, Leo Soroka from the Washington Post According to Reuters, U.S. and, and Israeli uh, officials, uh, Israeli officials will meet today virtually to discuss the operation in Rafah. Can you confirm it? And is the meeting uh, instead of the Israeli delegation that was supposed to visit the U.S.? So I can say that from day one, 
Um, from the very beginning of the war, we've had close, uh, almost daily interactions with, um, with the Biden administration, with our counterparts in America. Uh, that continues. Um, I'm not going to speak specifically as to um, whether a meeting has taken place or will take place. I can just say that those channels are open, will continue to be open. Um, America remains our uh, strongest ally um, and closest of friends. And uh, two things are clear. One, we must go into Rafa. Two, we're happy to, to speak to uh, our closest ally and discuss tactics and that sort of thing. But we must go into Rafa. We are a sovereign state. There are four of the, of the last uh, Hamas battalions in Rafa and they must be eliminated for the sake of the children of Gaza and for the sake of the children of Israel. Thank you. Question from Jay Ludden from NPR. The head of the Palestine Monetary Authority says Israel has refused to transfer money to the West Bank or to southern Gaza, from the West Bank to southern Gaza. Is that true? And if so, why? And does Israel have any plan to address the cash shortage in Gaza? So I'll say two things. Firstly, um, I have seen those reports, uh, but that is a question that should be directed at the finance ministry. Um, and I will say as far as cash flow is concerned uh, in Gaza, what I can tell you is that when the IDF um, has raided multiple uh, Hamas, Hamas outposts, including uh, Yahya Sinwar's personal uh, bunker, uh, we found millions, millions of shekels there and m many, many dollars. So we know that Hamas has money. We know that we're going after that money. Um, and I have nothing more to comment on that. Question from uh, Frederick Eager from Interplanetary Television. Um, are we closer or further away from an acceptable hostage deal for Israel? If further away from a hostage deal, as the continuation of hostage talks likely influence the decisions to launch the operation in Rafah, how imminent is this operation? Our stated goals of the war have not changed from day, you know, from day one of the war. We will destroy Hamas, we will bring home every last hostage, and we will ensure that, Hamas, that Gaza no longer poses a threat to Israel. Now that being said, we will keep up all. We will keep up all diplomatic channels. We will continue all uh, diplomatic channels and do everything that we can to bring home the hostages, as my prime minister has said again and again and again, and as is actively happening. One thing we learned when we uh, were able to uh, enable the release of uh, close to half of the hostages um, back in November was that two things do it, the carrot and the stick. Military pressure needs to be applied on Hamas. Hamas needs to be on their knees begging please for some respite for a breather. That's what brought them to a deal while the diplomatic channels were used at the same time. So we will continue. One thing doesn't rule out the other. We need to go into Rafah. We need to destroy Hamas and the hostages need to come home. Now let me remind you all that this war can end right now right now with Hamas putting their hands in the air, waving a white flag, um, surrendering unconditionally to our forces and releasing the 134 Israelis being held, men, women, children, babies. It's a, it is a crime against humanity and there is no reason for this war to go on if they would just surrender and release the hostages. Question from Jean-Philippe Rubin uh, from the BI Media Group. Uh, in her speech at the Israeli Parliament last year, President of the European Parliament, Mrs. Metzola, declared that Europe should learn historical resilience from Israel. What insights uh, can Israel teach other nations in the current situation? Well, like I've said about the Shifa operation, I believe that for generations... For generations to come, people will be studying the Shifa operation, how a hospital, the largest hospital in Gaza, was taken over by terrorist organizations used as a base. They were 
shooting out of, uh, out of the ER. They were holed up in the maternity ward. We know that uh, when people think of maternity wards, they think of beautiful times, that maybe the best times in their lives, waiting, waiting for the arrival of a, of a newborn. But what we found in the maternity ward was not newborns. It was weapons, weapons hid, hid in the uh, blankets, in the beds, in the pillows, all over the place, weapons, weapons, weapons. They turned something beautiful into something awful. But we went in there with a surgical force, special operations, and we took out over 200 terrorists. We apprehended over 900 terrorists with not a single civilian casualty not a single civilian casualty. So when the world looks back, maybe this year, maybe many years to come, they will look at Israel as the gold standard for dealing with terrorism under the worst and hardest of conditions. We will go after Hamas and we will limit civilian casualties to the best of our ability like no other army does and like no other army has done. Thank you. Question from Jim Williams of Zenger International News Service, Washington, D.C. Avi, can you confirm that the U.S. Defense Department has authorized $3.8 billion in aid and they are supplying both and ground arms to the IDF? Jim, I've certainly seen those reports. I can't comment directly to them. What I will reiterate again is that America remains our strongest ally, our best friend, and it is in the interest of America and Israel um, to stand shoulder to shoulder. Because Hamas, if you read their charter, it's not just about Israel. Obviously, we all know that they advocate for the uh, total annihilation of the Jewish people in Israel, the total annihilation of the Jewish people abroad, genocide of my people. But that's only the first stage. As they say, first they'll come for the Saturday people, the Jews, and then they'll come for the Sunday people, the Christians. You see, our defeat, our full victory against Hamas is an American interest as much as it's an Israeli interest because they don't just seek our destruction. They seek the destruction of the West and they see us as part of that. Or to quote the Iranians who bankroll them all, they see us as the little Satan and America as the great Satan. We're on the same page. We have the same enemies. We have the same interests. We stand shoulder to shoulder. Thank you. Last question from Yael Kuriel from Fox News. Is there any update regarding the Prime Minister's operation, health, or when we can expect to see the Prime Minister back at his office? The Prime Minister is a fighter. The Prime Minister has been a fighter for his whole life. He uh, valiantly served in uh, the Sayeret Madkal, our equivalent of the SAS or Navy SEALs, I'm not, I'm not really sure, but a special forces unit. He was part of the force that uh, liberated Israeli hostages from an uh, from, uh, airplane that had been taken hostage by Palestinian terrorists. He was shot in the arm in that mission. Our prime minister is strong. He has finished his operation last night. He is already... Uh, back to taking phone calls and running the country. And we hope he'll be fully back to uh, work, so to speak, um, very, very shortly. Thank you. We've had another uh, the best. Thank you. We've had another three questions from Dan Williams of Reuters. Um, why does Prime Minister Netanyahu intend to shut down Al Jazeera in Israel? Uh, is this an effort to pressure Qatar into pressuring Hamas to free the hostages. Dan, thanks for the question. As you know, uh, the Al Jazeera uh, controversies are not new. Uh, Al Jazeera uh, has been spouting uh, propaganda for many, many years, has been caught with their trousers down, so to speak, many, many times. Um, and currently, the democratically elected government of Israel is in the process of potentially uh, putting an end to that in some way in Israel. Now, as you know, this has uh, gone through a first hearing in the Knesset. There's still a potential second or third hearing um, before it, it, it goes to law. There's due process. Um, so we're not quite there yet. But what it does say is that many people in, in Israel 
um, are unhappy with uh, the way in which Al Jazeera dances uh, between the truth, uh, propaganda, and um, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. It's, a, it's an unfolding story. Thank you. A uh, second question from Dan Williams of Reuters. What was the flying object that hit Elat overnight? Was it launched from Iraq? So Dan, that's more of a question for the uh, IDF spokesman's unit, who I believe uh, recently put out a statement about it. But uh, if you want the absolute specifics, I would, uh, I would ask your friends there. Third question from Dan Williams of Reuters. How long will it take to evacuate civilians from Rafah ahead of the promised IDF incursion? So this is a work in progress. One thing I can say, and I've said again and again, is that we will go into Rafah. We have to go into Rafah because the last four battalions of Hamas are in Rafah. As my prime minister said, we're not going after half of Hamas, not three quarters of Hamas. We're going after all of Hamas. We need to break up all of those battalions. We've taken out close to 19. Um, there's one still in play in, uh, in the center of Gaza and there's the last four in Rafa. Uh, how long will it take to, uh, to, to get the, uh, the um, civilians out of uh, harm's way? Well, time will tell, but plans are being made and uh, we are moving to, to, to make that happen uh, in a way that I believe is unprecedented. But of course, it's not fully unprecedented because we moved uh, civilians from the north we move civilians from the center, uh, and now equally we will move um, those civilians in Rafa um, way out of uh, the line of fire. Thank you. That was the last question. Thank you very much. Same time, same place tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like, share, and hit subscribe to stay updated with our latest content. Until next time, stay informed and inspired. This is Dajabnik signing off.